Welcome back to We Know Scripted TV, where today we know The Penguin, Season 1, Episode 5, Homecoming. My name is Grace, but of course I'm not alone. I'm here with a gigante. It's Mike Gigante. How are you doing, Mike? Yes, Grace. It's not a Sabido Gigante. It's a Domingo Gigante. Mm -hmm. We're recording this on Sunday, uh, but I am thrilled uh, because this show is thrumming along like a gas-powered generator lighting up perhaps the new villain layer of the penguin like man this show even though we started with like a car being lit on fire it feels like mm -hmm. the brakes have been removed and we are just propelling forward there are so many things that happen this episode that i'm like are we sure this is an episode seven it has such great energy to it i totally agree and i think what worked the best for me this episode is sort of the coming together of the stories again i think that this is when the penguin is at its strongest although i will say i thought a lot of people I feel like this week was like the penguins really good. Penguins amazing. Penguins yeah, is the best show. Yeah, I mean episode 4 a lot of acclaim behind it understandably. So I think there was so much like it really took a beat away from a lot of the stuff that was happening, but didn't do it in a way that made it feel extraneous and why are we stopping down to do this? It was a beautiful piece for Kristen Milioti, for the mm -hmm. character of Sophia obviously informs a lot of what she does this episode and I found knowing her backstory a lot of the choices she made this episode were so important to me. And so I loved that, yeah, getting to see people kind of like fall in love with the episode the way that that I did. Not to say that we necessarily want to fall into group thing, but it's always nice to have people agree with you. Well, I feel like I feel like I was maybe more down on it. And I will give a little bit of like, uh, I said, a Mia Culpa, who, as you said, Mike, uh, you said before we started, is not a named character on the show. No, unfortunately, she was gassed alongside the rest of Mia Culpa, right. died alongside Milos. <laughs> Well, speaking of being gas, I think that last week I realized that I must have been writing my notes as the last scene was happening. And uh, and I did just miss that all the dead bodies were shown on the screen. I just completely missed it, Mike. I just I think. And then I was like, yeah, I really should have showed us all the dead bodies. And I feel like you must have been like, I think Grace, I think Grace got gas. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, uh oh, Grace, watch out for like, uh, you know, a crazed woman tiptoeing through the tulips through your house. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, uh, we will see them in body bags in mm -hmm. this episode. But yeah, quite the arresting ending, even though she was not arrested for her crimes. But no, they were in the in the episode last week. And when I said like, oh, I wish it was they made more of a meal out of it. They did. So I was wrong. Um, but I think I watched everything correctly this episode. Um, well, let's chat about where do you want to start? What do you think is the headline of this episode, Mike? Hmm. I mean, I think the headline is sort of... Uh, uh, I think it's sort of setting the stage for what comes next. I mean, we have the return of Oz and Vic back into the action. And this mm -hmm. is where, despite the fact that it seems like every episode Oz gets cornered somewhere, this is perhaps the sort of like second act nadir that we hit in every movie before the third act climax comes about where he, you know, thinks that he's able to wriggle his way out of this one where he has the Maroni prisoner exchange happen. I guess boy for mushrooms is uh, an equitable trade. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it all goes south. You know, all he's able to leave with is not only two buckets of mushrooms, but also a bounty on his head that his plans have failed, I think is sort of the biggest way to look through the lens of this. Obviously last week, a big showcase for Sophia. I thought this week was a big showcase for Oz to see how does he react when things actually aren't going his way? But then inevitably the plane pulls itself a little bit out of the nosedive at the end. Yeah. I, I think that's what I've liked the most about this show so far is that this is, I feel like so much of the situations that the people in the show find themselves in are mostly because Oz is not the best at his job, <laughs> which is being like a crime underlord you know yeah, well, that's um, a, this or, is why we're this is the origin story right like nobody enters their job on the first day perfect otherwise what do you have to do to grow yeah like when we watch breaking bad and we watch walter white become who he is it does feel like the challenges that he comes up against are because like he's a like a school teacher you know and he's like he's not he doesn't know this world um when we've when we've seen other shows of this what it this i feel like is so interesting that like oz is just like kind of bad at at 
like he doesn't i don't think he always thinks through what he's going to do which yeah, makes which, for incredibly entertaining television yeah i mean considering that a lot of the impetus behind what's been going on was due to an impulsive action of him killing alberto in right. cold blood right and he's sort of a bit of like you know chaos is a ladder except what if it's just chaos all the time <laughs> I feel like like the point of chaos is a ladder is that eventually you climb the ladder and then you're at the top and then you chuck the ladder down so nobody else can use the chaotic nature to come up and dethrone you. And yeah. Oz is like he's like put up so many ladders. He's like it's a lot of ladders that he's put. I don't know. No, um, it's, it's giving me a lot of like latter day ling little finger vibes. We're like early on, we're like, oh yeah, look what he's setting to put apart. And then you get to his extended time in Winterfell, and it's like. Dude, you got duped by Sansa and Arya <laughs> pretending that they hated each other. Uh -huh. Like it's that Oz, I think, was able to play this really able to navigate this balance beam for four episodes. And then it's just all come crashing down. And again, the plotting is so interesting that you could argue like the biggest inciting incident of where we why we are where we are right now is that standoff where the Maronis come in and are like outing Oz as playing both sides, outing Oz as killing Alberto. The Maronis are brought into the drug operation. Like, I don't think I realized that in the moment. I thought it was just like a fun action packed ending to the episode. But I think the farther we get away from that, it is him trying to dig his way up by continuing to dig the hole deeper. Yeah. And there's a world where like a lot of this actually ends up working where if like Sophia ends up getting, like I guess Sophia is like the one thread that I feel like he hasn't really figured out how to solve yet and mm -hmm. thinks kind of it'll just happen. Um, but specifically with like Sal that he does try to kill him and it just doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, yeah. The way he kills uh, Taj and that is pretty Ta brutal. Taj Maroney. I mean, Taj I don't know, Maroney. Grace, maybe it's just the depraved person I am, but as soon as I saw him sopping wet, I thought, Oh, that's gasoline. Yeah, Otherwise, what what other liquid would a criminal wannabe criminal overlord cover this boy in? Well, we did see earlier in the episode. We did see uh, Sophia dump just water on Johnny to make him. That's cold true, but in the maybe, yeah, they're putting him in like a cold. It wasn't a cold warehouse. I'm assuming. Well, maybe, maybe he was. I have to say, I didn't. I didn't see it coming. I was totally duped. Um, but yeah, I mean. Uh, Oz, yeah, he is digging himself further and further, which makes for a very exciting ending because I do presume that the show is called The Penguin and that Oz is going to maneuver his way out of it. But I think like there's there's a lot there's a lot here in terms of Oz. And I think we'll get to sort of the team up of the of the family rivalry um, of the Maronis and the Falcons. But even just you know, internally now his relationship with with Vic, he is so appreciative that Vic comes back talks about how they'll be in it together. Um, and he's so appreciative when Vic goes to take his mother to crown point, mm -hmm. but the scene with his mom is, is pretty brutal. And I think a continuation of, um, I mean, it's both that her health and her, um, you know, her mind is sort of, uh, is, is deteriorating, right? She's like, she thinks that Vic is her son until he says that he isn't. And she gets quite upset with him. And then, she seems to be so proud of Oz that he like killed everyone. And then he comes and he tries to comfort her in bed and he's like, you, you can't even take care of your own mother. And so this like back and forth here, that's, you know, I would presume is indicative of what it was like uh, growing up um, just probably without dementia, uh, that there was this like constant back and forth that this, his relationship with his mom and his dad and his brothers, uh, that it was, it was probably pretty tumultuous. Um, I think it makes for a very compelling thing that, that Oz just constantly feels like he has to prove himself that, you know, yes. even when he does get his mom to safety, she's being told he's not protecting her, which, uh, we did, we did leave a wild squid out there. So I don't know All that right, necessarily well. we're, uh, Hundred percent safe, but um, yeah, I love this. We can be left out to dry. That's probably the like the least interesting thing that is I, in this show. I agree. Period of like, oh, here's a random street crony that's looking after Vic. I completely agree. I find like Oz became such an even more interesting character once his back was up against the wall, and he knew mm -hmm. that he truly cannot talk his way out of it. Even going back to the scene with Eve when she's like 
I'm sorry. Cause he, I think deludes is not the right word, but he keeps building up this narrative to the people around him so much so that I think he has to believe it. Of like, don't worry, we're going to be on top. I'm going to make it work. And then we're just going to be, it's all going to be Shangri-La, you know, salad days. Don't you worry well, about it, baby. And I want to talk a later about that. Sophia basically uses a very similar yeah. uh, uh, mechanism to convince all of her to, to gain the respect of her cronies. But there's a moment when she says no, and he flies into this rage briefly. Yeah. And I thought, okay, so we're just going down the territory of like, yeah, this guy's a murderer. He acts out, etc. But then he like, turns it on himself and he like you know throws himself over the table and he's saying i'm such an idiot it's to the point where like eve has to kind of walk back what she said and is like no i'm i'm just a liability to you that's why i have to stay behind and you really get this feeling once he's in the bed which i will give so much kudos to not only the actors but the cinematographers as well just holding on that shot mm -hmm. of the two of them in bed and him trying to embrace her and her rebuffing him I mean, the interesting thing about Frances is that her most lucid moments are also like her most hardcore. You know, mm -hmm. it seems like the moments where she is most there are the ones where she is rebuffing her son uh, and telling him that like he's the best and he has to do this. And in this moment, he has to feel like a failure. He tells Vic, like, I promised I'd get her a penthouse that would look over the entire city. And look what he does. He brings her back to not the exact location that they were raised in, mm -hmm. but a great representation of it. The fact that you did all this work. You've been trying to lift yourself above your lot in life as the boy who grew up from nothing in Crown Point. And look where you came back. You're here at the end of the day. You'll never leave. And that's why, again, I think the adage of digging your way out by digging further down works so well with the ending of mm -hmm. this episode mm -hmm. where much like Sophia, right? Where she's like, I've been given this label of the hangman. So now I'm going to embrace it and murder these people for Oz. It's everyone has looked down on me as the penguin, as this low life from crown point. So mm -hmm. let me go further into where I came from as much as I've been trying to deny it. Let me use my past to inform my future, find this area that they're never going to touch and use it to get my way out of this. Yeah, I actually I think my only critique of this episode, and it's pretty tiny, is that the the old trolley tunnel stuff comes up like very conveniently at the end of this episode. And that's just a minor thing of like all I want it, it is to be seated earlier in uh mm -hmm. in the show. I want some notion of it. You want if some guy it, being like, oh, if only the trolleys were here. I mean, I, as I've said a million times, I can never tell whether I want showrunners to think I'm uh, dumber or smarter than I actually am. I can't tell. This time, I definitely want them to think I'm I'm dumber and just yeah, really like hit it home. Um, and or there's the world where like, um, if you're like, if there's big comic book readers out there who are like, ah, oh, so fun. It's the trolleys. That's from book, whatever. Like, I love that for them. So that's fine. It's, it's yeah. a very minor nitpick. I'm, I love it. I love this, like finding the, the trolley tokens in the jar of coins. That's stuff that his mother brought. Um, like the one box I love, she brought a box and she brought a lamp. She brought, she brought a brought lamp, lamp. Yeah. So, you know, to spruce up the place. I mean, something that should be noted. We got some talk about Oz's tragic backstory. We know it's uh -huh. coming. We know the flashback. Did you see Grace a moment? I'm going to put out a guess as to, I don't want to say how these boys died, but I do mm -hmm. have a bit of a theory. Okay, so the the setup here is that Vic does say, like, what happened to your brothers? And he says, uh, just like your family, the, the city killed them. He said the city took them just yeah. like they took your family. Right. Something that I noted as well, when they're walking through the tunnels, Oz stops briefly and contemplates on this grate that looks to be the entrance to some sort of Gotham City waterworks. Yeah, it does say the water. Yeah, yeah. Gotham I would City not be surprised yeah. if it's a situation where maybe the boys are playing down there and like the city flooded the tunnel or oh, something. Wow. So again, it's a little on the nose that like, okay, Gotham got hit with this flood again years and years ago. But that could have been something that it's like we'll wash out Crown Point because nobody cares about it, and it kills two boys in the process. No, I, I, that's a great, that's a great prediction. I love. It. I mean, it's. I think like uh, we've been doing some predicting on the thing. I had my whole thing about like how did Sophia kill people, not really kill people. That I think like wasn't. I wasn't right on the mark, but I was close. I, You're I very feel like close. the ultimate reveal. I feel like is in line with the themes of the show. That certainly feels in line with with the show. Of there's a little bit this episode. 
uh, we get a little bit, and I was so excited to see Con O'Neill on my television screen again. Um, that voice is uh, incredible. Wow. But we get into a little bit of the police drama stuff, and I I do think that there's like I think there is this this piece in, and we were talking about this last week about sort of the relationship between um, these choices that these characters are making, which is to like embed themselves further into this this world like this criminal mm. world and why why do that and vic is like the best example of someone who could have gotten on the bus and left and doesn't do that and it's because there is a way in which it's not just that you can be successful um in this world but also there's a level of like you're actually getting sort of revenge on the 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 world in itself right. of like what it what it did to you and that um, the idea of that is satisfying um, more so than just making it as like a lawyer or a bet, you know, a bet like having a successful career. It's like the idea of doing something, being successful in a world that's against the law. There is a level at which like, you know, the, that world didn't give me anything. And so I'm going to take everything I can from it. Mm. Um, certainly having his brothers die in something that either was an accident on purpose whatever but is basically the fault of the city and so therefore that being a driving motivation for oz and his mom too i think that there's a yeah. like, his mom knows basically everything about his you know this is i think sometimes different than what we've seen where it's like the mom who's like turning a blind eye to what's happening this is a mom who is fully complicit in what his, oh yeah what her son is doing she's gone full stage parent like i would not be surprised <laughs> right. if she uh -huh. was the one that brought him in as the driver mm -hmm. of the falcone mm -hmm. family of like oh no you go up and and do this thing i mean oz talks at the beginning of this episode about one of these gangsters coming into crown point and how he compared the car to a chariot it showed that even the kid with a bum leg can become the king and so it's not too dissimilar to like going back to some of these, you know, medieval parables that we love about like, you know, the, the peasant woman who's like, I'm going to get you into the court some way, somehow work your way in there, no matter what it takes. Uh, I think that she clearly has a lot of ambition and you can see the apple really doesn't fall that far from the tree. When Vic says what Oz did, she says like, Oh, he's going to need my help. And on the surface, you're like, what? But you can now sort of work your way backwards, especially seeing the two of them interact more to see like she might have taught him kind of everything he knows. Yeah. Um, so then going back to this, this base, this headquarters of the base, I thought this whole scene, and I, I will say that I think for me, the reason why this episode, why I would say that it worked better for me last episode, I feel like I was feeling, I was feeling this like sentiment about like this show is incredible. I've been talking with people and they're like, yeah, I'm watching the penguin 10 out of 10. It's a great show. I do feel like the last week's episode, while I do think it's very good, there was some of the stuff in the in the Arkham stuff that I think I was feeling a little like, I, I don't know. And, and it's not that it's, it is tropey, it is there, but I, I wasn't feeling, I, there was something about it that felt off to me and I still mm. am not entirely sure where to put my finger on that. As opposed to this episode, where I think that there are multiple times this episode, I actually really want to feel like for the first time since the first episode, and then the Batman movie, I thought the score was incredible this episode. Yeah, And I thought that there's a few moments and we'll talk about some of the stuff with Sophia and the way the score plays into it. But between the opening scene, the scene with Oz and his mom, and then particularly this last scene where they, they go into the underground. I mean, there's so much here and this is very tropey of like, where do the underground you know, where do they do their underground work? Literally underground, <laughs> like literally. Um, I do feel like this gives a little bit of the like, and I'd love for people to tell me how much this is like comic book uh, lore, but I feel like that like Danny DeVito version of right. the Penguin felt very like he's from the sewers. He's There was like this like version of the Penguin that he's so much more Penguin in like his shape and what he's doing, but there was this like very much like sewer monster energy to him. Oh yeah. Well, that... he was like a mutant baby that got dropped in the sewer. Right. Right. Um, and like, you're like, uh, you know, matching that up with the penguin, but in this version, I love sort of this, like, yeah, it's like, he's going to go into the sewer. He's going to do his work from the underground. The fact that there's a connection to his childhood, to these themes that you're talking about. It's certainly, I think tropey, but I just think like sometimes 
they use, we use tropes or tropes are used in television and movies because they work because yeah. they have exactly. thematic uh, resonance. Like this to me felt so good. Even the added touch of the last beat of this sh episode is that the, the generator like bursts, it, like the flames go off. Yeah. And, then like, it's like, Hey, we're, we're going strong. It's yeah. happening. And then it ends with a blackout quite literally when the generator breaks or like a, a light burst. That's exactly how I feel like Oz is, is that Oz has these moments of like, he can figure out, he, he makes a decision, he's so committed to it, it's messy, it's not perfect, and it actually could have been perfect, but he didn't get the right guard to kill Sal, and so it doesn't work, and then he's in the spot, and then he just tries to do it again, and he, and he figures out, he's a slimy little weasel, he can like figure out how to like maneuver around, they find this place, the generator works. It's lit up. What a magical moment. And then boom, the power goes out and he's going to have to figure out how to like fix it. I guess a, a pretty good encapsulation of what I think is working incredibly well about the show. And it just comes in that final scene, Mike. The moment where she pretty much quite literally burns off the rest of the Maroney family line. I mean, that's got to be the darkest thing he has done on the show so far, right? It's pretty dark. That's pretty dark. Yeah, especially yeah. considering mm -hmm. his own relationship with his mother, like just watching unblinking as he immolates them is wild. Yeah, this is pretty wild. And that scene too, like how did he not think that he would not, like they shut the door on him. They, yeah, there like, would be a trap. Like, oh, don't... let's go inside this enclosed space and make our deal. No questions asked. And it, it's somehow he he maneuvers his way out of it it works in a way that i thought was i mean yeah both like thematically it all works that like what will this guy choose to do what a what a like a psychopath and also like it i mean it just it looked amazing it looked visually like that's what a moment i'm like oh my god they're burning alive like that was that was wild. yeah it was it was like oh i mean yeah. wow just seeing their like you know bodies just charred in that moment and i think it's also a, a great representation because we haven't had it in a while of like yeah oz could do some really dark shit like yeah. this isn't a sophia thing where she was like essentially driven to kill magpie and then was sort of like pushed past her breaking point and then did this very dark right. thing like again oz shot and killed oberto in the cold open of mm -hmm the series this is a guy that is capable of doing whatever he attempts to wipe out the entire maroni bloodline doesn't necessarily work which is also interesting i did not know how much of a role clancy brown would play in this show because he's been honestly kind of more so making cameos than being like an out and out cast member but it seems like at the moment he is one of the primary antagonists yeah this is very fun very quickly I, just before we um i don't want to i want to lose taj who burns up in a fiery thing the opening the the one of the scenes at the beginning where he is yes. thematically has like blinders and headphones like he has headphones on as he, the tattoo that he's getting <laughs> the whole place gets shot was shot so well uh that's a pun um that uh everyone dies in the thing and then and then he gets taken i thought that was very very good for a character that like literally just showed up on our screen this week i thought like that's an excellent performance that's like yeah, yeah. 10 out of 10 and, and, no notes and also you know i think sophia is going to talk a bit about how uh maroni is different from her father but like also a very interesting sort of comparison between the two right that much like alberto yeah. seems like taj maroni was also kind of an f-up son to the point that like this dude's going on tiktok I don't know how I feel about TikTok being canon in Gotham, Grace. It uh, feels a little weird. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like, you're like, I saw the Batman. And it's like a TikTok video. TikTok. <laughs> well, I was trying to remember. I, I uh -huh. think the Riddler, I don't think the Riddler ever like posted on major social media platforms. Like they found his like well, online manifesto, but I'm pretty sure it was all fictional. Yeah, I do. I feel like there is there not a thing of like where there's been like the like going live. I feel like this happens in a lot of stuff that not just like Batman stuff, but I feel like this is like uh, I'm thinking of like like Dear Evan Hansen. Some of this like Mean Girls where it's like they go live, but it's like fake social. It's like clearly it's basically just Instagram, but like it, they can't they don't yeah. want to like pay for Instagram. Um, yeah, I want to go. Yeah, okay, going back to Clancy Brown, Mike. I was. Ah, I was devastated this episode. Um, I can tell you why. Is I know that... you were so close. You felt the way that I felt at the end of last episode. <laughs> Clancy Brown, uh, Sal gets stabbed, and I'm like, I did it. That was my first pick in the death draft. I did it. I nailed it. And then later he shows up, and in the meantime, <laughs> Johnny Vitti, who was your first pick in the death draft, gets shot in the head, and so you yeah. are currently up one nothing in the death draft. I will say it. I I don't. 
it's not looking good, I think, for Sal. And so I still think I have a shot. Um, and I do feel like my second pick was Francis, and I feel like that's still yeah, I feel like pretty likely that she won't survive. And your last pick is Eve, which, um, like, which I think listen, is also still possible. 100%. A, little, a little Schrodinger's, there's a non zero chance that he killed Eve uh, off I... screen, and we just didn't see it at this point. So, for all we know, it's Grace, true. like, there was a lot of bloodshed in this episode, it might be like a 2 2 tie. At the end of this series. Maybe we'll do like one final round going into the finale or something that I think could be very fun. Because, yeah, we wipe a lot of people off of the board. As we just mentioned, like Nadia, who was sort of the emissary for Maroni Uh outside of uh, of the prison, is dead in a brutal fashion. Yeah. So this to me, I thought that I love this. So a few things with the Sophia storyline this episode, which is Mm. first the the sh- the shredding of the name uh, and becoming a gigante and and taking the name of her mother who I, I really loved actually I thought for the first time I feel like Johnny has been played a little you know down the line of like yep. he's the underboss he doesn't you know and this bureaucratic moment, and this moment of I was gonna I helped your mom but she would refuse to leave because of you kids and then she tried again but she didn't do it. And I, I, to me, that feels like that's like, uh, Carmine killed her before she got the chance to leave. I don't know. I, I feel like you could reread that of like, she didn't, she chose not to go get the second car. And so then, then Carmine was able to kill her, or you can read mm. it that like Carmine killed, her. but you would think that if like, if jo- like, so Johnny doesn't get implicated in any of it because like, you don't think he'd be alive if uh, Carmine knew that he was trying to let Isabella leave. But that speech where he's talking about like what happened and then Sophia's choice to bring him back, I thought was really fun. And then ultimately she just, she actually, he, he actually is the, the exact uh, level of usefulness that he basically implies, but yeah. not in the way that he wants, which is that he will help her earn the respect of all the other people. Um, he thinks he can do that by ordering them around. She thinks he can do that by being shot in the head. Well, that's the thing is that like, I don't want to necessarily, you know, uh, bring any sort of like political allegories into this, but like Johnny VT is very much an establishment type. Right. He is the one that like knows how to run this operation. So basically mm-hmm. what he was like advocating for Sophia is, Hey, don't kill me. You need me. I'm your connection back to your dad's old world. I'm the one that you need. Not realizing that Sophia's entire MO is to torch all that, is to yes. leave that behind. It's yes. like, no, the entire problem was that I didn't like the way that things were previously. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not going to assume this role and just say that things are back to normal again. Yeah. We need a new normal. And killing Johnny the minute he speaks up against it, that's the thing, is that like Johnny, while he was an establishment type, he was speaking out against Sophia, which I think is sort of like twofold in that, A, there is a thematicness to her wanting to say again out with the old in with the new but also it's sending a big message to your new flunkies of like hey if you disagree with me i am not afraid no matter how long i know you to shoot you in cold blood uh so it was a very fun twist and turn as well because you think like oh i don't know about this choice to bring johnny back to life i mean uh you know sophia even says that okay at the minute that i let you go like you're just gonna get revenge on me but I will say, again, this is what Toy I was speaking to before about now knowing her backstory, mm-hmm. her like coming out outfit for yes. this first meeting yes. was so, so good. First off, it's her mother's clothes. And I think, you know, obviously her trying to pick up the mantle from what she felt was robbed, uh, both from like her own life perspective. She lost her mother, but also again, like this world, uh, you know, was without her presence because of her father. But Mm -hmm. also the fact that for the first time, and I guess I have to like really rewind to think back through all of Sophia's wardrobe choices, whether they were instituted by her or not, have all been incredibly concealing outfits. It's so smart. It's so good. It's so smart that she's wearing this top and this open coat and you just see all the claw marks Mm -hmm. on her neck to also symbolize not only is she out in the open, but she is a representation of like those physical scars that her past has bore onto her. And she is going to use that to inform this big pitch that she makes, which is basically we've all been used and abused by fam, my family, by the people like my family. Why don't we deserve a piece of the cut here? 
Yeah, I, it's so it's so brilliant. They, that, that like openness, the like you know that the the scars there. It's 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 an extremely smart choice. And the other thing I love about it is, it's not just I think an incredible visual, but it but it is a perfect visual for the protagonist of our show to be mirrored onto, which is Oz, who has a physical disability. He mm -hmm. has that that th there is these like mirroring of the two of them in terms of they're actually. They're the way that they are viewed upon, which I think has been a theme since the very beginning with Vic as well. That's why Oz is attracted to Vic as his, his uh, like, you know, his mentor, his protege is that Vic has a stutter. And so, I you know, I think when you look back in superhero movies and shows, like the reasons why I think good villains resonate not only because they're entertaining and interesting to watch and all of that stuff, but thematically they often pair really well with whoever is the protagonist. And normally it's a superhero. It's just a little different in this show where it's another villain. Like there is a reason why the Joker is probably the best Batman villain. Um, come at me, I guess. I don't think that's a hot take, um, but it's because he's so antithetical to Batman. Batman is order and rules and good mm -hmm. and Joker is chaos and evil and bad, you know? And so I think in this show, she's, it's, you know, it's just a really smart choice in terms of like, and I've said this every week, I'm like, okay, we're doing a villain show. Like, what are we, what are we saying here? And so we have this protagonist and then this is a perfect like foil to, to Oz in terms of somebody who similarly is going to be viewed upon in a particular way and is trying to like reshape and reown that narrative in the exact same way that Oz is. It's, it's really good writing. It's really smart. It's really fun to explore it each week. Yeah. And what I'm really intrigued by is I talked about this a little last week, obviously mapping onto a bit of the Game of Thrones Targaryen of it all with like, not to say that, you know, Carmine Falcone was not like, deposed and you know the bloodline has been cast away but like here is a daughter coming to take a throne that was formerly occupied by mm -hmm. her father and look perhaps controversially we saw that Daenerys Targaryen once she ends up getting that power once she is to go to a Joker adage catching that car that she was chasing ends up succumbing to the same quote-unquote madness that once took over her own father we'll see if it's the same thing with Sophia right like she comes in with a lot of these more progressive policies of like, no, we're all the rank and file. We're all going to have like a, an ability to work together and you're going to feel like you have a stake in this. But how much is that going to hold up once actually the operations of running this come into play? You know, is she going to mm -hmm. end the season behaving more like Carmine than she ever thought she would? Well, the other thing I just the, the, on the thematic point, too, is is that. I'm I'm just kind of shocked that like Sophia is not a more is has not been a more explored character because there's also this th the, and so the framing of what happened with Sophia why she's called the hangman is that it's her father who is killing these women and this is uh, this is going to be pretty dark I think I'm going to but mm. essentially you know that this theme of like that Sophia is not somebody who he thought of as some well he did think that she could succeed yep. him, but ultimately he then Un until until she didn't do what he she did what he didn't want her to do and what and the way that he chooses to suppress women who he doesn't want is that he he literally like he strangles them right he like they are strangled and and then they die and they cannot speak and they cannot breathe and they are they're put under his like they're controlled by him as opposed to other ways we've seen sometimes like, you know, that there might be more of like, a, you know, there's just being stabbed. There's like a metaphorical thing, th but that's not what th this is. And, and then she's taking that and owning that as like the thing, um, the rebellious thing. And, and I, yeah, I agree with like the, her, her costuming and everything, but I agree with you. I mean, the scene that I thought was really interesting. And again, a mirroring of, of Oz is when she dumps all the money out on the table and she's like, you could take it. And then they're like, uh may we and she's like you may like sh there is this like very generous like you're gonna make us more money than you ever thought and we held it we'll see how long that lasts like we'll see right. how long that that thing the thing about like oz would do that too he just doesn't have any <laughs> he doesn't have anything to basically give like he's like he's yeah. not he's not at the top of the internet but he tries to offer like vic these things of like what i want even with his mom he's like i'm gonna put you in the penthouse it's overlooking this the city you yeah know? and oz mm -hmm. from what we've seen is actually like pretty good to his goons i actually think oz is like a very kind employer and maybe it's him sort of paying it forward of like the way that i was treated was so nice that i want to make sure 
again, like two sides of the same trolley token, I think. With mm. and but what's interesting is that Sophia is obviously coming in from the family angle because that's all she knows. She's a nepo baby, Grace. Yeah. Like she mm-hmm. said, I'm starting a new family. She quite literally takes a new last name, and I wonder mm. what that means. Does she mean that she is going to treat them like family? Does it more so mean like here's a new empire in Gotham? Because also. Now, that's a little bit of a, a different ending. We talked so much about it's the Falcons versus the Maronis. Both families have basically been nearly wiped out. And now yeah. what she's saying is, let's create a new ending now where we can work together. Yeah, I want we you kind of we kind of started here and I felt like I, I took I took a trolley over that way, but we can come <laughs> back here now, which is yeah, this meeting with Sal and Sophia and this like, you know, let's join up together. And that feels um risky uh bad um you know sophia but i like that it's the two they're yeah they are basically the last people left of their family line except for the one cousin's carla's daughter who's <laughs> whisked, whisked away and sophia doesn't even like i know i guess she's got crime work to do but it's like all right i guess that kid's just gonna go um but yeah between um th- this like relationship that i felt like we were gonna get like the whole like i thought the season would be sophie and oz against them and that's you know the show very quickly like spins that around and puts it that like nope we're like things move quicker than that now we've got the the um we've got sal and and sophia together yeah. um uniting and and the way that she uses the way he was the the patriarch of his family is how she wished her family was. I really liked that writing as right. well. Right. It was like, oh, I see you actually mourning your dead wife and child. Must be nice. Thank you for actually having a heart. It makes it hurt a bit more, but it shows that like you're a better leader than my father ever was. And she's again making the same pitch of like, I am not my father, which again would prove to be the ultimate irony if she does end up being so. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. I mean, the thing that Sophia despite the doubts that Johnny might have or any of this, what she has now able to use to hold over the heads of anybody to use as a be all end all argument in anything that she approaches from now on is I killed my entire family. Like whether that's as a threat of like, Hey, don't like, don't cross me. I killed my entire family or whether it's her saying like, yeah, I can't be trifled with right now like did you see what i just did to my entire family and i liked it and i was happy about it but i had my reasons for it it's so interesting how already in the wake of i'm gonna say what a 12 hour period since she ends up mass murdering her entire family she's Mm -hmm. able to use it as such an interesting cudgel to get what she wants yeah um which that feels uh tenuous at best that you could just be like hey i killed my whole family you better work for me it's like i think you might just kill me and maybe you need to be killed what what do you make of uh dr rush returning and saying it's not that i wanted to control you it's that i wanted to be a part of whatever you're going to do next this feels this to me mm, i don't trust dr rush if i'm sophia but yeah besides this is the uh the the only non-squid part of the show that I'm a little out on. I just think I talked about this last week. I thought last week would be such a great off ramp for the character, right? That like, okay, we found out he had a little bit of a heart for uh, Sophia and what she was going through in Arkham. So he quits, but then she dresses him down, basically being like, no, you're just as bad as the rest of them because you were complicit in all this. So I don't really see a why, he's continuing on from a thematic perspective and B to be candid what he can offer besides being a sycophant, unless he's like, unless she tells him like, you still have the, the passcode to Arkham, let all the inmates out, let it flood the streets in a different way. I just don't really see what kind of like skill set he brings to be completely honest. And like, he also seems a little tweaked as well. Uh, And maybe it's because like, Sophia told him, hey, I know you're taking meds to kind of like numb the pain of what you went through. Don't do that. And now he's like just fully gone off the deep end. But I really don't know what to make of this character more than halfway through the series. Yeah, it's funny because it's not like Theo Rossi is a huge name, but I do feel like he's like kind of big enough that I I I mean, the show has a lot of big names. I feel like, you know, it, it does, you know, Con O'Neill shows up just to hang yeah. out in this episode, you know, another again, just he's flash like- that mustache and be weaselly. 
Yeah. Um, but like Clancy Clen Brown's here, right? Theo Rossi, I feel like, yeah, I, I thought maybe he'd be in more than he was. And I kind of agree with you that based on what we got last episode, that he probably wasn't going to be in much more. And I thought that maybe instead he'd sort of show up again near the end of the story. Um, but instead, I think he'll be here. And if to the point that I was sort of making about the trolley cart earlier, which is that if he's here and lingering in the background until he matters at the end of the season, I think that that's better than him randomly showing up. Like I would not be surprised by him making some sort of surprising move that ultimately matters. If it's kind of just as to have someone with Sophia who could die for her or end up in the crossfire here, that to me is a little less um, exciting, but I, yeah, um, it was in interesting to see him show up. And like a lot of the shots we're seeing is just of like, he, so he has a scene where he comes in and says like, I just want to be part of what's happening. And then he's just like watching it with as basically an expressionless. Like, it didn't seem like he was like happy or like worried about it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't um, know. Like I did. There didn't seem to be remorse, but there didn't seem to be like glee on his face either. Unless he's just more so like, yeah, I'm in it now. I'm going to bathe in Johnny VD's blood when everybody leaves. And like, maybe he's a little too freaky. And Sophia will realize that. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, that's where we, we end off there with uh, the Sophia and Sal team up. Dr. Rush in their corner. Johnny How long did. do you think the uh, Maroni Gigante alliance is going to last? Is this a final two alliance? Well, I keep thinking that it was like, no, that's like endgame. But I feel like, give me one episode, probably. <laughs> probably dead by the end of the next episode, probably, right? Honestly, that might be the case, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, anything else to chat about for this episode, Mike? Anything else you want to you want to pick on? So a couple of Vic notes, you know, I think especially he had his big episode in 3 and obviously was not in 4, but you know some some interesting moments from him certainly uh where like, you know, I I I can't tell if Oz's whole like, "Hey, you go help my mom," if he was being genuine about like I need to put her with somebody I can trust or if like the way Vic took it initially, which was like him being dismissed was also true. It does seem that I think Vic kind of had his baptism in blood. And I don't think that Oz thinks he's incapable of anything, but yeah, also seeing Vic kind of return to crown point is interesting considering that like he was somebody who one of the reasons why he was probably working for Oz was to get out of there both metaphorically and literally. And now he also finds himself back here he even remarks as he's in that apartment that like i used to live across the street from there and that'll be interesting as well if they're holed up in crown point for the time being of him facing a constant reminder of what he has lost yet he has still chosen to reside here yeah um yeah um and uh yeah i mean the fact that sort of the the Kim, yeah, I mean, I, I'm just so not interested in the squid stuff, but it's fine. We'll see where it goes. Um, but like, but but like what, what, what do we see as a path there? Like, all we know about squid is like he was a bad influence and like he's an intense guy. I'm thinking maybe like probably Tuco esque if we're going back to the Breaking Bad analogies of like, okay, he's like a secondary, maybe tertiary antagonist in the Vic story. That's really all I expect from him. Oh, I think he's just uh, an obstacle that like Vic has to, I mean, yeah, it'll be something where, like, when they're ready to try and leave Crown Point, like, Squid's there to stop them, and it's a confrontation, and Vic will have to make some decision or choice. I, I could see potentially there being a thing about, like, could Squid have heard from um, Graciela? Graciela like, there is, like, there's maybe something there to give maybe that moment a little yeah. more, like, emotional um juice to it but i i just fully expect him to be i i think squid is a person who is uh in service to die so that it shows how much vic is, has been willing to yeah do you think, do you think vic, world. yeah you think vic's gonna kill squid yes i um, i could definitely see that i mean also should be interesting is that uh squid did also lose somebody wasn't he cousins with like the mop top kid who yeah. ends up getting killed when oz lies that he wasn't at the club at that time. So maybe word yeah. got back to him there and he's, I don't know, seeking revenge somehow, even though it was Sophia mm -hmm. who killed him. Well, there's one other way in which you could, you could have squid create a lot of tension with Vic and Oz, which is squid could kill Oz's mom. That would be odd, but interesting. 
I mean, I think the thing is like it's like the you, the thing there would be like he's connected to Vic. If Vic could have stopped, like, like there's a, you know, it's like it tests test the relationship between and and then to me like you got to go kill Squid, like which maybe Vic is happy to do or whatever. But <laughs> I don't. I mean, that's where the tension, right? Like Squid sees Vic and Francis going into the building. Do you then therefore assume like the people who are in danger of Squid are Vic and Oz's mom? So yeah, we'll yeah. see. We shall see, but it looks like, you know, things are both stationary and that it seems like some of our main characters are holed up in Crown Point for now, but also, again, just so propulsive with the rate that things are moving. I mean, like, Sophia has already taken control of an entire mm -hmm. criminal empire within, what, half an episode of when she killed them. So, like, I cannot imagine what is coming our way in the next three episodes. And that's really exciting. I said it before, but I really feel like starting with episode three, like this show stepped up and stepped up hard that it's now like a, a weekly must for me and that I'm recommending to people as well. I'm really excited to see what happens next, especially with the way things ended. You know, maybe this is our taste of like, we're getting now these little pastiches of the penguin that we know maybe the ducky mm -hmm. car will show up now that the, the you know the the purple car is up in flames and that just leads us closer to this ending that i'm sure is going to be very and perhaps quite literally explosive yes um i'm excited the next episode is called gold summit uh like so mm. we'll see what happens in episode maybe that's like yeah. a nice criminal convention the gold summit mm -hmm. yeah we'll see um what else you got going on mike uh, so TV for real, we had uh, America Lopez on this week to talk the Vampire Diaries, which actually has a connection to the Penguin, Grace. Uh, so the Tell actor, who, the actor mm -hmm. who played Taj Maroney, may he rest in peace, uh, Arya Shagsmasi, uh, he played a large role in Legacies, which is a spinoff of a spinoff of the Vampire Diaries. Uh, called. Okay. So, talked with America about her fandom long held of that show, got to talk some stuff for Spooky season outside of that my usual stuff uh when it comes to survivor big brother just finished have the rhap live event shout out to everybody who came out for that and uh, anyone nice. who i got the chance to talk to very very kind words exchange and last thing i'll bring it back around to we're finally back in the cockpit grace operating that viper bsg coverage has returned on post show recaps if you needed nice. a reminder because i know i certainly did as to what we have seen so far you know the point that we are building to for season three of bsg because that took a big jump in a manner of speaking at the end of season two check it out but josh and i are now officially back with weekly coverage for bsg starting with season three episode one in just a couple of days you can check out everything else i'm doing as well at a make bloom type on social media so fun. Um, yeah, just uh, the tastemakers here on We Now Scripted TV. Tara and I are chatting about all things on television and telling you what you should and shouldn't watch. We're doing a lot of horror movie recommendations Ooh. leading up to um, we're going to have the top five horror television and film uh, picks of the last year. Uh, we're having a little bit of difficulty, Mike, getting a good um, calendar year for that i think it should be november 1st 2023 to october 31st mm -hmm. 2024 um but taryn doesn't like that because it's then you have to go and search up horror movies that were released in november and december of last year which surprisingly there are more than you would think they don't always hit the deadline of getting their things out before october like thanksgiving came out last year which is the eli roth uh halloween movie which technically could place this year but Alive. Yeah, I guess I guess you know the Q4 is spooky all around, so maybe it's easier to start to do like the past ten months of film. But then, we, what if things come out in the last two months and it's past Halloween, but it's, they're not? We didn't make an intro. Well, oh, that's it. on the marketing yeah. people. If they they should know that if they want yes. their movie talked about on a highfalutin podcast like the Tastemakers, it should yeah. release on or before October 31st. I agree. Now, that's what we're doing over there. Make sure you subscribe to We Know Scripted TV, the podcast feed. You can follow us on YouTube and tell a friend and ratings and reviews are always appreciated. We'll be back next week with episode six of The Penguin. Until then, bye-bye.